evening and welcome to Meticulous Moments. My name is Jonita Kapp. You can reach me at meticulousmacarons at gmail.com or find me on LinkedIn. Since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the globe, I've had the wonderful privilege to meet a wide array of fantastic individuals. These individuals have truly touched my life in so many positive ways. Amongst this group of people, there are authors, public speakers, life coaches, poets, leaders and visionaries. They are the unsung heroes of our time. Therefore, I decided to start the Meticulous Moments movement out of a sense of my gratitude. It is my way of giving back to the community. Let us share and reshare their stories in an effort to build a better society. Good day everyone and welcome to the Meticulous Moments podcast where we facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. And today we have the wonderful privilege of spending time with the amazing Fizz Anthony. Better known as Fizz, let's read more about him. At seven, when most children are jumping around on playgrounds and watching cartoons, singer-songwriter Fizz could be found in a rocking chair, eyes closed, listening to Beatles albums for hours on end. I used to have visions while listening to those albums of being this rock star and healing people, says Fizz. I've always associated rock and roll with healing the world and playing a part in it. It was never separate. It was always connected. Though a little older now, Fizz's dream hasn't deviated much from those days in that chair. With the release of his self-titled third album, Fizz, blend singer-songwriter rock and melodic British pop for an album that's both personal and universal, an album that recognizes the challenges of life, but reflects the singer's eternal optimism and hope for something better. Where most rockers strive for hedonistic self-gratification, Fizz uses his music as a vehicle for his various philanthropic pursuits. Music is very spiritual and sacred to me, he says, and I know it has deep healing power. I believe music can help bring peace into the world. One person can make a huge difference, and I believe my music can achieve that. Music has been around first since birth, having a stepfather that co-founded 50's Do Whoop group, the charades. Music was as natural for Fizz as breathing. I was always around all these great singers because of my stepfather, recalls the singer. The first time I ever heard them live was a magical moment. I was blown away. As he grew, the prolific songwriter would pick up the guitar, keyboard and mandolin and at the age of 12 wrote the first of an estimated thousand songs. Absorbing everything from Motown to Rod Stewart to Led Zeppelin, music became a familiar escape, a fantastical world where Fizz could tune out any problems in his life and just enjoy. After recording and self-producing two albums, 2000's Transcending and 2004's Right Where You Are, first brought in former Wings drummer Steve Holly and veteran producer Bob Stander to collaborate on the new album. Stander, who comes to the album with more than 350 studio credits in a decades-long career, bolstered Fizz's natural gift for songwriting, a combination of stream of consciousness lyrics and songs based on self-imposed writing exercises. Musicals, Fizz has filtered all of his diverse influences growing up into one distinct sound. On the new album one can hear the romantic adult contemporary melodies of Elton John, the melodic British pop rock of the Beatles, the alternative rock of Goo Goo Dolls, and the smooth as satin vocals of countless doo-wop and Motown singers. Take me back. Contrasts fizz hard driving guitar with his mastery of pop melodies. 
The funk backbeat of contagious verses seek you perfectly into its upbeat hook. There she's first trading lines with vocalist Jeanette Montalbo in a gorgeous ballad that should be the default background song for every wedding proposal. In 2014, first released Ignite the Rockstar Within. Ignite the Rockstar Within is a book as well as a motivational concert series that takes you on a magical musical and educational journey with motivational rocker fizz as he shares with you the many trials and tribulations of his life as a musician, visionary who has big goals of healing the world through peace, love and music. In the first chapter, Fizz introduces his music visioning exercise to help expand your mind and sharpen your intuition so that you can start making inspired decisions that will help lead you to your sole purpose. Regardless of genre, Fizz's message remains spiritual, without the preachy and hopeful, without the hokey, brimming with an internal optimism in stark contrast to some of his nihilistic peers. It is this hopefulness that has guided Fizz through his various charitable pursuits. With that, we would just like to welcome my wonderful friend, Fizz. Good day, meticulous moments audience. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another vibrant session here where we facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. And today we have a very, very special guest. We have Fizz and we are so, so excited to share this time with him. Welcome, Fizz. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for making time for us. We deeply appreciate it. Now, we've had a virtual coffee and we've talked a little bit on Messenger. I've seen some of your clips and I, I, you know, I follow you on Facebook. But would you just introduce yourself to the audience as well? Sure. Yeah. So, hi, everybody. My name is Fizz. I'm a singer-songwriter here in America. I'm in New York City. And um, I work with the Grammy award-winning producer, writing songs for entrepreneurs, speakers, anybody has a message in their heart, I take your message and who you are and help you transform that into your very own custom song. I call it your signature song or your brand anthem and uh, also write songs for couples. So they have their own love song. I call it soulmate songs. And um, of course I've been using the healing power of music in so many ways uh, which I know you're going to dive into, and we'll talk about that and uh, the various different things that uh, I'm here to help do. And God blessed me with my gift of the gift of music, and that's the main thing I use in regards to get, get getting the message out there. Absolutely, you know, just hearing you describe that is just it's prevalent that you are very dynamic. This this really not a song that you can't write, and I love the fact that you actually put these categories out there to make people aware of the fact that music is so important in our life it really speaks to us and it's really you know something that that uh, ministers to us and I absolutely agree God has definitely blessed you with a gift I saw uh, a live the other day where you were I think it was a $60 guitar or a $65 yeah. guitar and you were like how does this one sound but I mean I was like doesn't matter what the amount of the guitar was. If it's in your hands, it can play anything. <laughs> yeah, that was a, it was a clever little uh, thing. I, I, I try to be clever in regards to uh, social media and share, sharing a post. And so uh, it was, uh, yeah, exactly a perfect example of it's not how expensive a guitar is. It's, it's, it's the person that plays it. Yeah. The point came across so well, and I thought it was an amazing way of bringing that point across. I saw the comments, and everybody was so engaged, you know, and you have a very strong media presence. Uh, people love to follow you, and they love the ideas that you have, so I have to commend you on that. Thank you. I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed that you share that and, and that that is so on, on uh, a, a certain level because I am, as you know, as we, which we're not really going to dive into too much in this conversation, but I am somebody that's very vocal in regards to spiritual and political affairs and kind of like similar to John Lennon. And what there's some people that don't realize that because, you know, when you love John Lennon, you love John Lennon. It's like he's John Lennon, right? And he's such a, a beautiful person with the, 
the, his music and his message, but there were people that didn't like John Lennon. And, oh. and you know, yeah, because he was outspoken against the wars. Uh, you know, I know veterans here in America, uh, a, a couple of them that didn't like John Lennon because he spoke out against the war. But I, I personally appreciate that, you know, and I, I love artists that um, are willing to do that because you take a risk when you do that. And uh, yeah. I, I personally agree with that. There are people that don't agree with that. There are people that think that musicians should just stick to the music and nothing else. And I've heard that time and time again. Uh, I think that there's a balance with things. Mm. I agree, Fizz. You know what you are saying? It really resonates with me personally and with my podcast because I always tell everyone, yeah, we speak the truth and we do so unapologetically. I've had guests come on and, you know, they're too scared to share their religious views because they're not sure what people will say. And then in the, in the course of the session, I tell them, you speak your mind and you speak your truth. I was in an interview the other day and the lady started speaking about God and I fell in with her and we talked about God and after Afterwards, she said she was so afraid because it slipped out and she thought, you know, what am I going to say? Because now she's promoting her religion. I said, well, you have to bring the real thing to people. People want the authentic uh, views. They don't want anything that's plastic. So your views, I respect them. And I think it's good that people speak up. Here at the Meticulous Moments podcast, you know, we speak our truth. We speak what resonates with us and we keep it real. So I really appreciate the fact that you, you know, are putting it out there that you love to speak about religious views and political views as well. And if during any, during the course of this um, interview, you feel like putting anything out there, you are more than welcome to do so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to our next question. You have a deep passion for people and their general well-being. Now, I've seen that first, and can you tell us how this passion developed? Where did it originate from? Um, well, I, I think I, I mean, I, I used to have a ritual I would do when I was a little boy. I used to put on a Beatles album, and I would close my eyes, and I would sit in a rocking chair, and I would... Yeah. I would pretend that I was one of the Beatles. Usually I would pretend I was John Lennon and, and I would visualize the world becoming healed because music was healing for me because I grew up in a very turbulent home. Uh, there was a lot of chaos. And so my music was my salvation and it helped me and it helped heal me. And so I associated, I always associated music with healing. And so I had these, these uh, visions of healing the world and healing the children. And uh, that's where it originated from. That's beautiful. You know, and, and what I find interesting is you didn't just keep that healing to yourself. You found this treasure. Music is this healing, you know, to us and to the world. And, and you developed it, that skill, and you brought it to the world. Uh, you could have kept it to yourself, but you decided to share. And I'm guessing that that is because you want to help people who's going through similar circumstances that you faced as a child. So that is that is really beautiful. And, you know, you had a musical career that is so phenomenal. We would love to know where did your musical career start? Oh, okay. Um, my musical career started... Um, professionally would you say i mean my my career started I, I honestly when i started playing music you know like back in the back in the 70s in the 60s and the 70s here in america i don't know about you're in uh, in south africa yes yes yeah so but here in america back back in in the 70s in the 60s and during that time it wasn't uncommon for houses to have an organ and we had an organ in my house and I would play this organ for hours. And that's really the first instrument I learned to play on was a, an organ. Wow. And so I immediately, you know, we, ha I had like a book back then, like the best of the seventies, you know, the best of the house of the rising sun, you know, these yeah. kind of songs, but I would always go off into my own little world and I would just yeah. jam and create. And I did that even before I knew really what I was doing. You know, I mean, I studied, I went to college for music. I studied music. I studied classical music. 
Um, but I was playing before I studied theory and all of that. So, you know, it, it that's re really my career started in the beginning with that vision. And then mm -hmm. I started, uh, you know, performing around um, in bands, you know, in my teens uh, and then professionally starting getting paid professionally in my uh, early 20s, I would say. Wow. Wow. Um, I love the fact that you started, you know, on an organ. I have an organ, um, but I don't know how to play it. I can play a few strings here and there, but I don't know how to read music. When I play guitar, you know, I don't read the sheet music. I play the bar chords. But something I, I thought about when you were talking now is that I've met children and I've started youth bands and younger youth bands and, you know, grown-up bands for the church purposes. But sometimes I get someone that they play by ear. So we'll be doing oceans and they'll hear it and they'll start to play, but they won't combine that with reading the chords or reading the music. And then I find people that can only play if, they, yeah. if the chord is right exactly on the paper at the correct width, they can't play by ear. They don't have that feel. And you have both. You started with, yeah. you played by ear, you heard a tune, you played it. And then you went to college and you cultivated that gift and you learned how to read sheet music. Yeah. And that took a lot of dedication. And that's why you are successful and why your career, you know, is so wonderful because you really put that effort in. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, absolutely. I want to ask you. Do, do, your, yeah. do, your, do your listeners know that you have an amazing voice? Because you I'm mentioned all these that. things. You know, you just mentioned all these things about like you're, you play guitar and this and that, but your voice is absolutely, it, it, it just, I got emotional listening to you. You're so incredible. Wow, thank you, Fista. I really appreciate that, especially coming from you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. It's true. Thank you very, very much. Now, uh, we love playing guitar. I mean, you just go, I mean, it's amazing. Like I mentioned on the live. Now, tell people, yeah. how does it feel when you pick up that guitar and you start to play? How would you explain oh. that? I love it so much. It's just, like I said, music is healing for me. And um, there's many different ways to play. As you were saying, there are people that know theory. There are people that uh, just play by ear. They play by their heart. And, uh, and it's, you're right. I, I'm both, but, uh, and that has given me the ability to have this business where I can write songs for speakers and entrepreneurs and I take their message and who they are. And so, cause I disciplined myself my whole life growing up um, different ways to write music. I would dis I would give myself different writing exercises. Like I would pick a word and I would write around the word or, you know um, I mean, I preferably just like Paul Simon, the Beatles and all these great songwriters, preferably I normally like to write to the melody and just kind of let you get in a zone and you kind of let spirit flow through. And yeah. uh, just like playing guitar, when you're in that zone, it really is uh, music is God's language. It's the language of the angels. That's why the angels play music. So I love the way you articulated that music is God's language. I've never heard anyone say that before. Oh, it's so true. And, it, you know, there's this, I forgot this really, this is really genius scientist. Uh, he's an Asian guy. Uh, I forgot his name, but he mentioned that uh, the universe is made up of th uh, the language of music. Wow. <laughs> like, like in technical terms, like this guy goes into this whole thing and uh, yeah. it's, it's really, really incredible when, uh, when people that are scientific geniuses start understanding the power of music on that level. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it, and it uh, kind of breaks it open for us that it doesn't really matter what we do, you know, and what we are occupied with. We are all really connected by this music because, you know, if they, if they can find that in the universe, I mean, it flows through all of us all the time. Absolutely. That's wonderful. I was going to ask you, how do you write 
Um, do you write the lyrics or the melody <coughs> first? It was on my on my uh, question oh, list because I was okay. interested to know that. <laughs> yeah. So, like for instance, like someone like you, like an entrepreneur, what I would call a harpreneur. I call people like you a harpreneur because you're driven by the heart, right? You're not driven by money. You're driven by the heart first. Thank and you. so, um, my clients are most of most of them. I call harpreneurs. And so I take your message. So for instance, in your situation, meticulous moments, and we yep. would, I would have a session with you and interview yep. you. And I like to walk my clients through a soul journey from the beginning of their, their, that they can remember in this lifetime. And I really dive deep with my clients to get to the heart. And uh, what yep. the, people, we all think what we want, like what, how, how yeah. we want, what we want, well, how we want our song to be, want it to be like this. And I, I have the questionnaire where I ask my customers that, but yeah. my clients, my friends, but, but, um, but I always find that when I dive deep with them and ask those kind of questions, things get revealed that they're not even aware of. A, a lot of the times people push things down that they don't even realize. And so I'm very, very good at helping people really step into their dream in a bigger way. Let me just grab some water. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But like, like I was saying, if I'm writing my own music for me, I yeah. normally like to write the melody first, whether I'm on the piano and then yeah. write, write the words to the melody, but I can write yeah. in many different ways. Yes, yes. I was, I was uh, having flashbacks now when I did my gospel album in 2013. It was a mix. Uh, it was, I had some lyrics and then I, I didn't have music for that. And then I had some riffs, you know, that I, that I kind of coupled with them. And I remember so clearly I was in the corporate world at that time, full time. And I had a deadline because I had booked the studio. So I had to be there. You know, because we had to record the vocals and then I had to show what did I want for the music and everything. And I remember sitting that whole night because of the deadline, uh, getting time off from work and getting the studio. And it just flowed, you know. Uh, and even though I was under pressure, it just came through and it all worked out. But I wanted to say that with you, what I love what you do is you don't have a template and then you let the people come in and you put them with this template and that template. You, It is tailor-made. That Absolutely. song uh, yeah, expresses the person to the world, the real person, not what the what they put on social media or what they want to uh, like people to uh, would like people to believe about them. It's the real person. So I yes, absolutely exactly. love that. You know, it's authentic. Yes, exactly. You said it very well. And that's exactly right. And that is what separates me from other people that are doing it. And uh, that's why I do have some high end packages in regards to my services, depending on what somebody's budget is. I mean, I have packages yeah. that are platinum package, $10,000 or more, where I bring in my Grammy award winning team and we write you songs. So depending on what somebody's budget is, but yeah. you know, look, I've written songs for children that were dying of cancer for free. You know, I'm a hardest, mm -hmm. I'm a harpreneur tour too. So I always, um, know how to tune into someone and what, is, what are their needs and what, what is, that's going to serve somebody. I love that. I absolutely, absolutely love that. And, you know, uh, being and in, in, in just flowing from your heart is so important. I remember I did a cover for um, someone like you by Adele, and it was actually booked for the day after my mom passed away, and I, I didn't cancel because my mom was the type of uh, person that would have encouraged me to go. She would have said, you know, she's moved on. She's just in another realm. I should go. I should just go. She was always like that. So I went. And the moment that I uh, went into the studio, we started singing. And I remember the, uh, my good friend said to me, the first take that we did, he said, just stop. And I said, yes, uh, what can we work on? And he said, why are you not putting emotion into it? Why are you just, you're just singing the words. And I said, well, I'm trying to be strong, you know, because I feel very emotional. My mom just passed away and I'm going to do her funeral in a few days. So I'm trying to be strong and I don't want to get upset. And, and he said, no, I want that. He said, I want the emotion. 
Right. I said, well, now that you talk about it, I've been so strong for so many years. I kind of forgot that I have the right also to have feelings, you know. Oh, yeah. And then a good talk. Yeah. And then it it just changed the dynamic of the song. So you, you talked about the heart. I agree with you. It's it's very important that we work from our heart. Oh, absolutely. And uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you sing from the heart because what I heard that you share with me was, you know, very heartfelt. And by the way, where can I hear your, is you, are your recordings available, the, the gospel uh, music you did? Yes, yes, I have. I haven't actually put them on YouTube yet. I must just upload them, but I will do so this week. I've actually had it in my diary, and I keep uh, putting it on to the next day and the next day and the next day. So I'll definitely make a, a point of it this week. Um, I oh. have the CDs and everything, but I never uploaded it yet uh, onto the platform, but I will do so. Excellent. Yeah, because I really want to hear it, hear your music. Thank you. Thank you, Fizz. And I wanted to ask you, you know, we, we are passionate. We love music. We love God. We enjoy that energy. When we pick up that guitar, you mentioned how you feel, you know, when you strum that first note. And I want to ask you, what is your favorite memory of performing? Where did you perform and with who? Well, I think you saw the video of me with the children, right? Oh yes, I shared that. So for the for the your watchers that haven't seen that, um, yeah. and if, they, if you look, for those of you watching, you can look it up. I think you could probably find it on YouTube if you put in my name yeah. is News News Twelve Long Island. Um, my favorite performances are performing for ch uh, children with special needs, and yeah. um, the, the news found out about my performances, and they came and they filmed my one of my performances for for the children. And uh, though they're so beautiful, their hearts are just so open to receive the music. And, um, and so they're able to receive on very deep levels. And because of that, it helps me, you know, I mean, it's, it's such a heartfelt connection between the children and I. And so uh, those are by far my favorite. And, and look, I've recorded with Grammy Award winning producers, the best musicians in the world, you know, playing playing in bands with uh, the, the bass player I presently have now is played with Bernard Purdy, who's played with everyone from Aretha Franklin, Steely Dan, Dion Estes was my bass player. He played for Marvin Gaye and then went on to play for George Michael and Wham. So I literally perform and play with the best musicians in the world, but nothing compares to me going and singing for the children. It's just mm -hmm. a, an incredible spiritual experience for, for all of us. It was phenomenal. I saw that video. I'm going to share when I post this uh, interview, I'm going to share it in the in the description because people really need to see that video. It, it You could feel the energy and I could see what you are describing, how the children were just open. I mean, they were so delighted that someone took the time to come and just, you know, impart that musicality, that love, that acceptance into their lives. Uh, it really touched my heart. It was really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. It touches my heart, too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I wanted to ask, how can the audience utilize your services uh, if they want a song for their relationship, if they want a forever song? You know, how can they reach you? What do they need to bring? Is there something that they need to um, write down, maybe thoughts or feelings or journaling? Or do you cover all of that in your interview? You mentioned that you that you interview them. Well, what I normally do is um, offer a, a session, a free session to see if it's a right fit and uh, get to know somebody and what they want and what their goals are. And, um, and then uh, once we're clear on that, um, then I interview, I interview you and I take your message and who you are and I write it out. And then I put that into lyrics and I get my mm -hmm. clients to be as engaged as they can. You know, I, I really encourage them to, to participate in the creation of their song. Uh, if they want to, change the lyrics, you know, add some ideas, whatever, whatever they could do. I had one of my first clients was, a, uh, his name is Daniel Gutierrez. And he oh. was a professional speaker, but he wanted to be a shaman. And oh. his songs, Magical Life. And so um, 
I, you know, he doesn't sing, but I, he had like the sacred drum. And so I said, well, play your sacred drum and I'll put that into the recording. And so I recorded wow. the sacred drum, you know, anything I can get to get, get them into the song to be a part of the song in any way. Yeah. So wow. I, I'm creative with doing whatever it takes to do that. And so even if somebody isn't musical, and so his song, The Magical Life, literally helped him manifest. He took off his shirt and tie and suit and tie and wound up becoming a shaman that owns a healing center called Catalina. And he takes people to Machu Picchu. Uh, there's a video I, I made of him flying over Machu Picchu. If you look up yeah. The Magical Life, Daniel Gutierrez and my name. And in that little video in that song... Uh, I went to see him speak at an expo and he had it playing on a huge screen with, with thousands of people at this expo. And within months, he manifested his rea it, it into reality. And now that's what he does. <laughs> that's amazing. And that shows the power of music. And I mean, it must feel so wonderful to know that you were a part of all that. You facilitated that for him. Yeah, that's exactly, the, that's it. I help facilitate uh, and walk people through that journey and see their dream even bigger and help them step into it. And I wrote a you, book, you know, called Ignite the Rockstar Within. This is my book. The beat up I version didn't know. Of it. Tell us. Yes. Did you know I wrote a book? I didn't know you wrote the book. Please tell me more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a book I wrote called Ignite the Rockstar Within and uh, help people get clear on their life purpose. And um, so I teach a music visioning technique exercise in here. And, you know, I have some pictures in here. There's a picture there. My, uh, my stepfather that recently passed away in his doo-wop band. I used to listen to them when I was a little boy. So, you know, yeah. instead of chapters, I call it stage, like stage one, oh. stage three. And uh, it's a really that. good book. You know, I got Martin Luther King Jr. in there. And, um, and uh, you know. It, How do we order that there. book first? How do we order your book? Is it on Amazon or where do we order? It's on Amazon. Wow. If you look up so Ignite the Rock Within, you'll find it. Wow. I love the yes. chapter name. Muhammad Ali wow. said he was the greatest before he was the greatest. And that's really yep. important. It's really important for people to understand that he literally willed it and spoke it. First, there was the word, right? Yes. And you have to speak it and bring it in. Absolutely, absolutely. I believe in affirmations and I love the fact that you combine affirmations with music. You, you, you put it together and you make it a product, you know, something new and fresh. That is, that is an amazing talent. Thank you. Great. So I'm going to definitely look for that book and share the link in the description for the audience to find it on Amazon. Now, we had a lovely virtual coffee. I mean, after that virtual coffee, I had so many things to think about. And I want to ask you, what are your favorite topics to discuss? You know, when you meet new people, what are the top go-tos? Mm. Wow. Um... I never thought of it like what are my favorite subjects to discuss. I mean, obviously, what we're discussing now would be yeah. majority um, music and and using music t to help people get their message out there. Um, yeah. you know, help them heal. Uh, I think you know I wrote a rock opera musical, right? I think you, you mentioned that? that before. Please tell the audience more. I would love for you to well, share. That's my big. That's my big dream. And and uh, when I was a little boy, I got, I got the download. Yeah. I I thought it was from God. I believe now it was probably from the angel Gabriel, which you could see yeah. like over here. I got Gabriel. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. they they were saying that. There's going to be a movie somewhat based around your life later on. And so uh, it never left my mind when I got this yeah. download. I was like, wow. And so 40, 40 years later, 
I wrote the rock uh, and I realized, oh, it's a, it's a rock opera musical movie. And it's wow. about a little boy who remembers being Jesus. He remembers these different past lives he's had. Um, he remembers being a Lakota medicine woman. And he goes on this magical journey where he reconnects with souls from different lifetimes. And yeah. uh, the overall, the message is everyone's the chosen one. So the cool twist with it is he has, I don't know if you're familiar with the hero's journey, right? There's a, no. there's like a, the hero's journey is, uh, it's kind of like uh, they use that in movies. Like, for instance, with Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, Luke Skywalker had um, Obi-Wan Kenobi was his mentor. So usually oh, the yes. hero's journey, the hero will have a mentor. So the yeah. cool thing in my rock opera musical, Fizz and the Ultimate Dream, is the street journeyman shows up when Anthony, before he changes his name to Fizz, he's down on his luck and he's sitting on a street corner and a street journeyman walks up to him. He's like in his 60s. He's got like a beard and really debonair looking. And he says, what's the matter, young man? He goes, oh, I lost everything. And he goes, well, you still got your guitar, right? So the, the wow. street journeyman grabs his guitar. Want me to play a little thing? Please, absolutely, absolutely. So the street journeyman grabs Anthony's guitar and he plays this for him. You got the world on your shoulder You don't know what to do Well now don't you worry Please now don't you cry So many times I felt the pain Hit me so hard Like the pouring rain back to anthony and anthony was like wow street journey man that was amazing and he gives him like the inspiration to go on and so yeah. the cool thing is the street journey man is actually him it's his future yeah. self oh, amazing it amazing jesus in a past life so it's, it's got some really cool twists to it yeah I was, I was enjoying that so much. I could listen to you for hours. And I was thinking, you're making history here, Fizz. You're making history. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And that's the message in the uh, rock opera, too, is every, you're the chosen one. The chosen one is thee. There's a song where Jesus is singing on the mount. The chosen one is you. The chosen one is me. It's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's power, powerful. It's inspiring people. I know people are going to rewind the recording and listen to the song again and rewind the recording <laughs> and listen to Even the song again. Even though I tune, actually. I should have tuned up the guitar before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I 
so I keep, love that you, know, you fix it. Yeah. For all of you that, you know, you just got to keep going no matter what, you know. I mean, if it was really, really attitude, I would stop. But, you know, it's something I say to people is just like, you know, you break a string, just keep going. Keep, yeah. you know. I love it. I love it. I saw that you picked it up and you played and you were like, no, this and this and this needs to be tuned yeah. a little bit. So I was just like, I love better it. Tuning now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. That was, you probably made my month because I oh, had yeah. a live song by Fizz. I mean, how much better can my day get? <laughs> Thank you so much. And, you know, I noticed something about you since we met. You're very soft-spoken, but you are a strong leader and an influencer as well. How would you encourage people to pursue those passions that they have in life? Mm. Well, just number one, you have to allow yourself to dream and to know that God well, well, whether you're listening or not, and you don't believe in God, whatever, whatever your belief is, you're here for a reason. And you're here, you've been blessed with gifts. And it's important for you to acknowledge that and to allow yourself to have fun. I like to encourage people to have fun. That's why I teach music visualization. Um, and, and how I used to do it was listening to music and visualizing what I would like. So that's something um, if your listeners are, would, would like to uh, learn a little more, I could send them my book for free. I could send them a link to my book wow. and my music for free and kind of share a little bit uh, music exercises, yeah. how people can tap into that and uh, use their imagination to just um, have fun and allow yourself to dream, yeah. allow your heart's desires to come in and write that down. And, yeah. uh, see how you can uh, monetize that into um, money into uh, a, a business if if not if not a business at least how can you bring that into the world more it doesn't have to be a business if you don't want it to be a business but yeah uh, it can be and you know I'm sure you've heard oh the music industry is so hard oh it's so this well you're you're having a conversation with somebody who gets paid thousands of dollars to write songs for people and I could testify yes. The, the, the journey of a musician's not an easy one, but it's certainly, it's, it's harder not to do it if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I got creative and um, have been able to position myself where I can get paid to write songs for people. Wow. And so, you know, whatever your heart's desires are, whoever you're listening, you know, whoever's listening, allow yourself to tap into that. Absolutely. Dare to dream and uh, never give up. I love the gist of the song, just keep going, you know, never give up. And uh, I was on a live today and they asked me for some final comments. And I said, you know, have you seen these uh, movies where the little naughty kid is standing by this expensive vase and he wants to push it over and the parent is standing there and saying, don't you dare. And I said, I don't want to say, don't you dare in a reprimanding manner. I want to make it something motivational because nine times out of 10 in the movie, the little boy does bump over the expensive vase. But I wanted to use that analogy and say, you know, when you are in the race of life, if you get tired, you can run slower and you can walk and you can even stand a little bit and catch your breath. But don't you dare sit down. Don't you dare give up on yourself and on your dream because you have that dream and that passion for a certain purpose. So I love how you, you help people to ignite that. You help them to get momentum. You help them to voice it, to put it into something that they can experience. Because people, like you said, they repress things and deep down yep. there are things that they, they need to let come. It, it has to come out. So absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I saw, you know, when you went to Common Roads, that school that we talked about, I saw that they actually made that song. This is it. They made it their school anthem. I mean, that yeah. speaks yeah. chapters. It speaks stages. <laughs> yeah, it, it was their official uh, graduation song. This is it. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, how did that make you feel when you heard the news? How did you? <laughs> uh, it was um, 
It was humbling. It was, uh, it's an interesting question, you know, because I don't do it for awards or recognition, but so, you know, it's a lesson to be learned because it's important to allow people to yeah. recognize you. Beautiful. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And so uh, it was, it was a wonderful experience and they gave me an award. Here, I'll show you wow. the award. Wow. Uh, I have it. Beautiful. I got it on my wall, but I took it down. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. So they gave me this award for my uh, for outstanding community service on behalf of the physically challenged awarded to Tony Fizz Di Mattia. I love it. I love it. And what are we about here? We are about community upliftment at Meticulous Moment. So you fit in so well to the family. I, I really, I, I appreciate you so much. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Tell me first, you mentioned that rock and roll music signifies healing. Now, please explain this to the audience. I agree with you, you know, that, that music is a powerful tool. It comforts us. It develops us on all levels. How do you, um, how can we articulate how that music heals? On what level? How, how would you describe that experience? What feeling do you get? Uh, do you see something in the spirit? Is it the download that comes? Well, it's a feeling more than anything, you know. I mean, I just love, I just love yeah. music and especially rock and roll. I mean, I love all kinds of music. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. really love mellow music too. I love love songs, um, yeah. melodic love, sweet songs. I just love me. I just love music, and yeah. um, it just touches my heart. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just. Um, it's 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 not, it's almost unexplainable in a way to me. Yeah. But, uh, something I wanted I wanted to share that you know I do so many different things, and so for for your listeners that are listening, you can even have your own your own song, your soul song, um, your hearts and your dreams, and put that to music, and yeah. listen to that. So better than an affirmation is have your dreams and your aspirations put to music. Yes. Beautiful. Yes, with you know your your listeners with if you want. Yes, absolutely. Audience, reach out to first. We all have that need inside of us. It's not to say you know you have to like you said to be in the corporate world. There's music for everything. Music speaks to the heart about everything. I mean, sometimes it's so odd to me. Sometimes I wake up and I want to listen to mellow love songs, and I have no idea why, but it speaks to me. Something subconsciously is coming up. Some days I want to listen to Reliant K, and I just want the rock, you know. And and I don't know why, but I'm feeding my soul. I'm feeding my spirit on that day what it needs. So um, reach out to Fizz, have that free session with him and discover something new. I mean, we are continuously learning and growing and there is a saying for a reason and, and the saying goes like this, change is the only constant. And that's why, you know, we look at, we look at music and how it develops us and next year we're going to be at another place and we're going to write another type of song and so it just goes and you should really always just stay in that flow. Absolutely. Yeah, so I want to ask you now, what is next for you? What are you currently busy with? What can we support you with? How can we cheer you on? Mm, thank you. Um, well, like I was sharing, the Rock Opera Musical, I, I, hired, uh, I, I hired someone named Dan Fowler, and he goes by the Imagination Engineer, and he does these events, and I've been the music director for his events, um, yeah. where he helps people monetize their vision into bi wow. a business uh, using your imagination and these other different kinds of techniques. And, uh, and I hired him to help me with my ultimate dream, the Fizz and the Ultimate Dream. That's my rock opera. So right yeah. now we're redoing my website. We're building, we're going to, I'm going to create a new uh, YouTube page uh, for that, for the ultimate dream. And um, so my goal is to get the rock opera musical made, get it out there, 
And uh, so we're working on different creative ways we can do that. And in the meantime, I still have all these other different things I do, like signature songs, helping entrepreneurs get their message out there, brand anthems, right? You have a brand, I help you take that and, and bring it to the world through music. Um, so uh, if, and if it's resonating with anybody that's listening and they're a speaker, if they're an entrepreneur, or if you're just somebody that wants to live your dreams, uh, reach out to me and uh, I, I'll send you some of my music. I'll send you my book for free. And if you want to have a session, we could possibly do that. Um, you can find me on, on Facebook. It's Fizz Anthony, F-I-Z Anthony. Um, my main website is fizzforever.com, F-I-Z, the number four, ever.com. And, um, yeah, and, and I'm on TikTok, too. I'm, I'm – uh, starting to, to get uh wow. into tiktok which is interesting so i love that i'm gonna look for you on tiktok as well audience please it's follow us on all the social media platforms reach out to him he has something a god-given talent to, talent to offer uh, make use of it it's going to be a journey it's going to enrich you it's going to develop you it's going to edify you so he he shared the social media handles i'm going to put it in the description and i want to ask you uh first when i can't believe we are at our last question I mean, time just flies when you're having a blast. So I just want to ask lastly, do you have any words of wisdom for the audience? Um, words of wisdom? Yeah. Every, every soul has their own journey. Yeah. So there's a lot of information flying around. A lot of misinformation flying around too, yeah. which we didn't go down that road right in this conversation, which is which is good because it's a whole that's a whole other conversation. But uh, it's important for you to tune into your soul and into your intuition, mm. and to allow yourself and to trust yourself to tap into your heart's desires and um, to listen to God, that voice inside of you that wants to be more and do more and yeah. i mean you're enough who you are but yes we can always there's always more we can do yes. and so for those that aren't let's say that might feel unhappy they're not you know they don't know what they want to do they feel unfulfilled they're they're not in a career that brings them joy that you know wake up passionate um well allow yourself to dream about the things that would make you feel that way write them yeah. down and start um you know with you know with that and also with gratitude i'm sure a lot of your listeners have heard to be grateful for what you do have because you know yeah. when i perform for those children some, some of them can't even breathe without a machine right so yeah. like you you know if you're listening to this you have two ears you can even hear and what you know you, if you're watching you have eyes to watch so yeah. make sure you're you stay in gratitude too yeah beautiful 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 i love that and and you know one of the hashtags that i always use one is leadership and i really feel you're a leader in society i feel really that you you impact lives and you do so actively and the other hashtag that i always use is gratitude and it really speaks to me that that also resonates with you. So thank you very, very much. You have blessed us beyond measure. This was the session of the year. I, I loved it. Thank you so oh, much. <laughs> thank you so much. I had a great time. Thank you to the Meticulous Moments audience. I have the privilege to take a lovely selfie with Fizz after this session, and I'm going to post this video. Please follow him on social media. Support him, cheer him on, share the session. Let's get it out there. And just thank you for joining us, and we are going to see you in the next session. Goodbye. Thank you. Wish you all peace, love, music. <laughs>